how did you become a designer? What was your inspiration? And at which fashion school did you go to? My mother owned a boutique, an evening wear boutique. So I spent all of my time uh, playing dress up and designing my own pieces. I also studied fashion at Istituto Marangoni in London. When you watch your mother as a child getting dressed or, you know, like you've just said, your mum has a, has a shop, it kind of is embedded in you, isn't it, what fashion is about? It's all about the attitude and dressing up uh, for, for success. As a girl from Damascus originally, and me too, how you bridge Middle Eastern heritage with modernity. My designs are all about combining rich heritage with super versatile pieces. Both my product lines, ready to wear and accessories, rely heavily on intricate know-how. So the fabric that I use uh, for my ready-to-wear is uh, damask silk, which is what I'm wearing right now. It's all natural silk and it's woven on hand-operated draw looms. Uh, it's a technique that's almost obsolete and it dates back to the first century. Damascus was actually wow. at the heart of the Silk Road. So you can only imagine what rich heritage it's got. <laughs> I'm wearing I'm wearing one of your pieces today and you know the silk just feels so versatile, uh, so comfy yet um, you know at the same time it feels rich. And the hand loom is amazing because it uses no electricity and it relies on, on a skilled artisan so you know when something is, is handmade it's already extremely full of life. It's different than when it's industrialized, let's say. You know, you're getting artisans to make the uh, collection on these looms, on these woven looms, which use no electricity, so there's zero carbon. And there's also my, my clutches that are, that, that are extremely rich in crafts. So they're made um, using a craft that dates back to, I think, 4,000 before Christ. Inlaying mother of pearl into, into wood is usually taught from generation to generation, and it requires expert artisans in different fields to bring the piece together. It could take an artisan up to 15 years of expertise before he goes solo. Yeah. These guys are really trained up. I mean, it's, it's a generational thing, right? From father to son to, it's an old tradition that's used. And like as a Damascene myself, it's my goal to showcase this magnificence to the world by blending it with my modern designs. So my designs, they do have an air of nostalgia to them. But they're very modern in the sense that they're wearable in different ways and they're super adaptable to today's fast-paced life. How long does it take for each artisan to weave uh, maybe a meter of the material on? You know, does it, is it a day? Is it two days? Yeah, so a single person only makes one meter of fabric a day. The mask silk has long been known to be very sumptuous. It's actually the first and most graceful fabric of the Renaissance. I read that the Queen Elizabeth herself, or, or British Queen, actually wrote to the Syrian embassy and asked for some Damascan silk to be woven into her own <laughs> wedding dress in 1947. Is, it, is that right? The Queen has worn Damask silk on several occasions. Name, name me a couple yeah. of people from the Renaissance that actually wore it. From Marie Antoinette and uh, so many historical figures, really, because it was, it was the main fabric for the like aristocrats, let's say. The queen wore the damask silk from Damascus for her coronation. And what is the idea behind these bold statement pieces that you create? Because I'm trying to make minimalism fun. Like, who's to say? that if you want to own less pieces, you've got to go with neutral colors. I'm wearing a blazer right now, yeah. and it's emerald green, and it's got a pattern on it. I can wear it uh, either fully turquoise or just emerald green, and then it's also got a waistcoat with it. You can wear the waistcoat from the other side if you want the lapel to be to also be emerald green. So, you know, it's just, it's fun. I tried the top on, and we just threw it with a pair of jeans. You know, you could do that just to go down the King's Road or, you know, yeah. to the shops. Or then you could wear the waistcoat with the trousers. So it's almost like a jumpsuit for an event or, you know, a, a, a wedding even. I'm trying to instill the concept of, you know, buying less and styling more, falling in love with your pieces and getting super creative with them. The most sustainable pieces are the ones that you already own, right? Or the ones that have been handed down to you. You know, like I've got some amazing... I know I've got an amazing fur from my auntie, you know, it's uh, vintage pieces. Or I've got 
uh, incredible 80s dresses from my mother. Getting those beautiful pieces into the wardrobe and keeping them there for generations. I think that's so important. And that's the difference between like investing in quality pieces, right? And appreciating them. Because when you do that, you end up lengthening their life cycle. Is that you're actually preserving the earth and you're saving the environment and you're taking care of your earth. It just takes a little bit of thought behind everything, you know? You've got this collection called 2000 and Nights and, and yeah. I'm not wearing the men on my top, but you've got them on your top, haven't you? You've got yeah. these little yeah. men on your top. Can you yeah. explain your collection? This is my second collection today, actually, and uh, it's called De Minui, which is 2000 Nights, inspired by the tales of 1001 Nights. It's such a romantic love story, really, isn't yeah. it? One night, the Sultan finds out that his uh, wife has is being unfaithful to him and and this dates back to the ninth century so which is really shocking and he vows to take a bride each night and have her killed the next morning until he marries his newest wife Shahrazad, who this who decides in order to escape her fate to tell him a tale every night so he keeps her alive in, in order to hear the next story and then the next day she starts a new story and as you can guess this went on for a thousand and one night the out the outcome was was not only a life spared but a sultan madly in love two thousand nights is an analogy between um shahrazad and the modern woman the collection allows her to tell her story artist artistically through these captivating uh, statement pieces so the hand loom um, it's a very simple process, but it's, uh, it's very beautiful, and uh, especially when you're working with all natural silk. So to have a piece like this in your wardrobe is almost unique, you know, and I think it's really important to, to know this about slow fashion and uh, in comparison to fast fashion. So fast fashion in general um, represents uh, inexpensive clothes that are usually made of uh, fabrics that are made using fossil fuels, but they also rely on very cheap labor and horrible working conditions. Fast fashion promotes trends, it's very trend-driven, and it releases uh, collections every, every two weeks almost, making the turnover of the clothes that we wear extremely high. Low fashion, put simple, is all about slowing down the space. So slowing down the production of new items, introducing fewer collections a year. We release two collections a year, um, that are extremely compact. Usually they're made of two to three designs. Uh, they come in different color variations. And yeah. you've taken those fabrics, you've upscaled them, and then you're then using them to make a beautiful pret a collection. We upcycle, so you know, so we've got um, all of these beautiful, beautiful, beautiful fabrics that have been produced maybe over 15 years ago. If there's so much demand, maybe, you know, the art of the draw loom will 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 persist it'll continue keeping that craft alive keeping the loom alive no electricity you know there's so much to be learned from old technique from old oh, craftsmanship i myself actually can you see i've got the whole piece on so um i decided yeah. to dress it up with with the trousers guys can you see that i've put the trousers on as well my pieces are actually tailored in uh, beirut and so in Beirut, I work with Syrian refugees. Tell me about your accessories and the idea behind your bag. My clutches are all uh, mother of pearl inlaid, mother of pearl inlaid in walnut wood. Um, this is a very, very, very old craft. Um, it's used mostly by Eastern, the Eastern world in furniture, walls and household objects. Can you give us an idea of where, you know, you've created your designs? Is it from traveling your inspiration? Where's the inspiration so, come? from uh, mosques, churches, uh, churches, architecture, uh, backgammon and chess boards. I so love I, it. I, I don't think I'm going to take it off, actually. This one, I'm, I'm going to wear it all day. <laughs> they're sort of a belt and necklace. Um, they're made of uh, chains and they're embellished with uh, natural and semi stones. Well, who are your clientele? I only sell direct to consumer. <laughs> who inspires you as a designer? I would say Yoji Yamamoto. That his focus was on the cuts and on the um, on the cuts and on the um, asymmetry. I kind of do see myself in him in the sense that you know we're really in a time of sustainability and minimalism right now. He went with the black <laughs> and and fine cuts, and then you've taken you know minimal pieces and created these designs out of them. Well, I, I I hope to recreate what he's done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to you, Joanna, for sharing with us your your ideas and your designs.